focus tonight. Um, I think you guys found out the other day I wasn't very happy. Um, just in our, in our pregame conversations, and, and uh, uh, I've spent two days just trying to reconnect this team in terms of what we do on the defensive side and how we go about it, and having having a little um, emphasis on that. And it's amazing how offense becomes easier when you don't worry about it. And uh, I thought tonight was a great example of that. I thought, uh, I didn't know Terrence had 31 until I, I post game. Um, but he, he guarded the basketball like he did early. And, and, and we got connected that way. And, and that makes things easier for us. But I, but I thought our emphasis last two days, we didn't work one second on offense. Uh, we knew they were gonna play a little zone. We worked on that today in shoot around. But it's all been about the defensive side and just getting back to, to, to guarding. And uh, the only thing that we didn't do uh, on that side today was loose balls uh, and just come up with them. We gotta be much better at that. That didn't impact this game, but it could impact us in March. So um, Coleman was fantastic. Um, I thought he set the tone when they went to zone, get the ball in the middle to him and he just sprays it. And you know, the last thing he does is look to score, but he throws that thing out and, and gets, gets TJ a couple wide open threes. Um, you know, 50% from the three-point line, uh, you'll take that every night, 12 of them. I, you know, I keep wishing we would shoot more, but um, but tonight was a solid night. And then I thought defensively, we talked a lot about keeping them off the three-point line. I thought that was the one way they could beat us, uh, is if Williams and uh, Namari and, and Luella made threes, uh, they throw one in in the last minute. Um, so we did a great job there following the game plan. And uh, all in all, good night. Brad, what do you think, or what encouraged you most about the defense? Coleman said, being more aggressive, pressing those guys a little bit, maybe you liked that a little bit. What yeah, did you like? We guarded the ball. We weren't eight feet off the ball. We guarded it. We actually connected with it. And, and um, you know, we, we're a team with size and, and, and length. We're not, we don't have Trent. Um, you know, so we're not, we're not going to be that. We're, we're more a team that we have to challenge, we have to rear view contest, we have to, 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 to keep chasing guys. And, and instead, I think we got really comfortable just funneling them into Coleman. And, uh, you know, and then, and then taking the easy way out by calling the switch. And uh, we've basically eliminated that tonight. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what we did early and it got us to seventh or whatever we were in the country and, you know, get back to being mean and nasty. Well, offensively, you guys, you say they didn't really work on offense, but those guys, it seemed like the ball was moving tonight, much better execution, cutting, you know, when they would come double, just seemed like you had a great game plan, even though you maybe didn't work a lot on it. What is that just a testament to the age and skills? Of your yeah, and I, you know, I mean, I, it, it, it's the, the, I don't want to say we weren't focused on, we talked about, we knew, we knew what they were going to do. Um, but you know, putting a game plan, you know, we're gonna we've had to adjust almost every game. So it's made it's it's been running your base stuff because teams have cross matched us, teams have done this or that. Um, and, and we've had to counter that. You know, Michigan State game, we posted Coleman a ton against the guard. Uh, so we've had to adjust some things. So it, it's been more on the fly making some adjustments. Um, but yeah, veteran team did that. But again, I think it still goes back to the emphasis being on the other end. And that's what's gonna that's what's gonna win. We got, we got a number five. We're number five in the country on uh, offense. So probably moved up after tonight, I would think. But um, we we got to understand what wins. Offense is fleeting, and and we got to keep figuring out how to win when when the ball doesn't go in. I know you talked about reconnecting and the emphasis on defense. I'm just wondering if there's anything from the last two days that you could paint us a picture of kind of what that looked like to to spark that attention to defense and that shift. We lost. Losing. I mean, you, there, there's two things that happen when you lose. You either learn from it or you accept it. And we have a great locker room. 
and and we're not going we're not going to accept that. And and if anybody liked giving up nine out of ten, uh, and when the game's on the line against Michigan State, when we have an eight point lead and control the game, then they don't need to be in that locker room. And it, 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 man, this is a really smart group. It's a cerebral group, and and so losing, losing is brutal. I mean, it's in my world it is, and. Uh, so they don't accept it, and we learned from it, and we talked about it, we showed film, and then we went out to try to correct it. Brad, you mentioned it with Terrence on the ball. Uh, how much can he be a tone setter there, and how did you see him embrace that tonight? <clears throat> what he does. He's 6'6", 220 pounds. He's athletic as anybody in America. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, uh, has to want to be that guy. That's his, that's, that's, um, and then he finds his way to 30. You know, he finds his way to 20. Terrence is going to score 20 most nights um, just by being out there. And, uh, uh, but that's his impact on us. And, and everything starts on the defensive side. When you see somebody sitting down in garden, um, I took him out in the first half. He was one possession, he stood up, he got back screen, he wasn't ready to play, get out. Uh, and if you're not going to be ready to play all the time, then I'm not going to play you. And, and he's, He's such a, uh, a, a focal point of teams on the other end. He needs to be a focal point of what he does on that end because he's really, really good at it. To dovetail off that point, Brad, you had said when Terrence got back, it was just going to take time. It was, you were, you were going to have to wait on him and take time. What was the plan for him, and what was the plan for the four other guys on the floor as you guys waited? I don't want to say I had a plan because I don't. then I'd be disappointed if it wasn't met. And, and, and so you always want things, I'm very impatient. You always want something sooner than it happened, but you're, you're, real, you're realistic, he was gone for a long time. And, and, and coming back, we were in a pretty good groove offensively, and, and um, um, so it, it, it just almost had to happen organically. It, it had to happen in the right, in the right way without any pressure to, to go do this or go do that. And, and, and I think he's, he's, uh, uh, he's handled that in a, in, a, in a pretty good way. Like he was tw averaging 23 a game, his last three coming in, and we truly haven't run much to him. And, uh, but re-engaging him on that end has the ability to take us to another level. Coach, they had, they had four, like four early offensive rebounds and very, very little after that. Was there, was there a point where your team just got dialed in on the defensive glass? Yeah, and Doug, it's one of the things we talked about I think they were number one in the league in the last five games. They were averaging almost 13 offensive rebounds a game. And uh, uh, we felt like that's the one area that they could, they could really hurt us. And usually when you get an offensive rebound, you either get a layup and a foul or you get a kick out three. And I was petrified of the threes. And uh, uh, again, we, we fumbled a couple balls and we should have had, and, but um, we, we, I don't know what margin to have, 10. 10, 9, but what it, and, and I think that's one of the things that you know I felt pretty good about because that they're they're big and they're physical. I guess as a coach to have a guy like Terrence that can score 20 or 30, you don't have to just run set after set to do that. Like, I, don't, I guess what's the the comfort or the advantage or just the I'm not sure how to phrase that, but just to, to know you've got that in your back pocket. Well, I think he, when he starts shooting the three like he's shooting the three, then he becomes a really, really hard guard. And, and again, um, Ty, Coleman, Marcus are all really good playmakers. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what he does on the defensive and triggers what he does on the offensive, and he gets out of transition. If I could ever get him to be a six, seven, defensive rebound a game guy, he'd get another four or six points. He scored four or six the other night in Michigan State on the offensive glass. If I could ever get him consistently to go to the offensive glass, he'd find another four or six points there. He just knows how to find baskets. And he doesn't need a lot of help doing that. And getting to the free throw line and uh, all those things factor in. But um, yeah, he's, he's, he, he finds points in a, in, a, in a lot of different ways and his teammates find him because they're all playmakers.
Coach, to kind of piggyback on that 50% three-point shooting tonight, how much does, of a relief is it for you to kind of see those shots fall, and especially with the recent struggles here at home? You guys make that up, not me. I mean, I, that's, I, I, I rely so little on offense, and, and you guys think I'm nuts, I know, because it's so fleeting, and it, it, it can come and it can go. And it is it great to have one of those nights? We, yeah, we've had a few. Um, is it something I worry about? Most of the time, I just want them to keep shooting them and, and shoot more of them. Um, so I, I don't, I don't really concern myself with it. When we're taking good shots and the right shots, I'm, I'm, I'm all in because really good shots are hard to find. Brad Wooks usually one of the first ones off the bench. What was the reason behind him kind of coming in later? In Nothing, game? just kind of, just kind of a, um, you know, Luke's, Luke's, Luke's. A tremendous shooter. He's he's fighting. He's competing, and just kind of uh, stayed with the little group a little longer, and and uh, you know, that was kind of what the what the game needed on the on the defensive side. So he'll be, he'll be fine. Last one here for Scott. Mm -hmm. well, last three games now, Coleman's got 17 assists. I mean, has there just been? I mean, the opportunity's got to be there, but has there been? Have you seen something from him where he's facilitating at a, a higher level like that? Yeah, other than his no look pass against Michigan State, he's been he's just made. Now he, he he tried to throw a back cut. Um, he's made really smart plays and simple plays, and and you know obviously somebody's got to finish him. But um, you know Coleman's the game's really slow for Coleman. Uh, mentally, he just sees it. He understands it. Uh, he, he's never sped up, and um, you know and then he. Playing in space has been great for him because he's shooting the cover off of it. So teams are all, you know, they were barking all night, shooter, 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 every time he touched it. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty gifted that way. All right, thanks.